Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. Latest data, latest trends. It's all about this Pacific pattern that is going to be engaging. In fact, when I show you radar, it's already starting to happen up in the Pacific Northwest. 119 to 127, it's going to rule the West. It's going to be much warmer. This, the subtropical jet stream is going to be the dominant player, the mechanism that brings all this warm air in. And it's also going to uh, fire off a couple of southern uh, track lows that kind of move out of California and then down through Arizona, southern Utah, southern Colorado, and northern New Mexico, a couple of those. California, when you do get snow, 120 to 122, um, most of the snow is going to be above 7,500 feet, that rain snow line. Even better if you're at 8,000 feet or higher. Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, you've got snow coming afternoon, evening, 120 through 122. Um, but again, it's a different snow quality than what we've been seeing here recently. Uh, it's going to be warmer with these waves of moisture moving in. All right, here is radar right now. Uh, from the Pacific Northwest. And the 117-118 storm we had in Utah, Wyoming, Colorado is gone. It's, it's exiting Colorado and Wyoming as we speak, and it's all about what's happening up there in the Pacific Northwest. Heavy precip, some snow over the high uh, cascades, the high volcanoes, and rain at lower elevations. And this is what we're going to see with this heavy precip hitting the West Coast. All right, here's the, uh, the forecast radar and satellite. So that's the current state of affairs. As we roll into the future, uh, it's all about the West Coast, Pacific Northwest, some snow up in B.C., uh, but when that precip hits California on 120, uh, late 119 into 120, again, high snow levels, you got to be above 7,500 feet. And then that precip gets thrown into the interior. You can see it does run across the Wasatch, the Tetons, and parts of Colorado, but it's ragged. And then there's one of those southern track lows right there. That's 121 into 122. You can see it kind of spinning through the four corners, delivering snow into the mountains of Colorado on 122. Already another storm system hitting California. And then that one will also throw a southern track storm out, uh, probably 123, 124. But you get the picture. Uh, you get the pattern here. I mean, it's just wave after wave hitting the West Coast. And then the interior gets what's left over. That's the bottom line. You get what's left over in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and Colorado. All right, let's talk about the jet stream here. Um, this is tomorrow, 119. You can see the, uh, the previous storm system moving away, and now the door is wide open for that powerful subtropical jet to blow in warm air. And it's still happening here on 122. I mean, it's very pronounced. And if you were to look at this jet, it extends all the way back well into the Pacific. You can see there's, there's a trough kind of swinging through the four corners. That's one of those southern track areas of low pressure. Uh, here's the pattern on 127. No cold air. It is uh, all locked away up into Canada, but you can see how that uh, that jet is. There's somewhat of a, a ridge of high pressure sitting there over the uh, the southwest coast of California, and then everything is being directed around that. But that's a very warm pattern right there on 127. All right, let's talk about the snowfall. So this is the um, grand total map. Uh, the rest of today through 127, potentially 10 to 20 inches in the Sierra, more up on Shasta, higher elevations, about a foot for the, uh, the Wasatch, but that's during that entire period. Um, about a foot for the Tetons in Colorado, two to six, maybe two to eight inches of snow. The biggest stuff's up there, Washington and BC. That's where we could see one to two, maybe three feet of snow in, in areas. Let's zoom in on this map to the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Again, not a lot of snow here between 118 and 127. Another one to four, two to, two to four, two to six, something like that. Um, let me take you further west, again, to the West Elks. And again, not much here, um, kind of a two to four inch pattern. Uh, maybe a little bit more around Crested Butte, but uh, that's probably going to do it for this time period. Okay, let me break it down by time uh, period, 118 through 119. So today and tomorrow, barely anything in the lower 48. It's all up in B.C. and up in Washington where that precip is hitting right now. 120 through 127, again, you've got that flow that hits the West Coast, 10 to 20 inches above 7,500 feet in the Sierra, um, about a foot for uh, the Wasatch about a foot for the Tetons, and, and again, about two to six in Colorado during that time period. The bigger numbers up there in purple through, the, uh, through parts of Washington and B.C. where you could see over a foot. All right, let's go up to the northeast. 118 through 127 grand totals, about two to six, maybe two seven, two to eight inches, something like that. Again, no real well-organized storm systems. Most of this actually falls very late in the period, around 124 if I'm not mistaken. So it's kind of a waiting game to get to that point. Let me go back and we'll end on the grand total map here today, um, 118 through 127. 
again, it's just a, it's a complete transition now. And, and you know, we had the Arctic blast with that major storm cycle. Well, now it's something totally different as we head into 119 through 127 with this specific pattern. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it and take care.